Hi, I'm Alex, a 30-year-old freelance web developer. Before we dive deeper into my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales like this one. Living at home at 30 and freelancing might not sound like the pinnacle of success, but it's been working just fine for me, up until my sister Jessica and her fiancé Brian started making it a point to highlight it as a failure. Working from my old room, converted into a makeshift office, I've coded my way through numerous projects, savoring the comfort of familiar surroundings. Jessica has always been the outgoing one, ambitious in a more conventional sense, and Brian, well, he's pretty much cut from the same cloth. Climbing the corporate ladder at a major firm, Brian carries himself with a sense of self-importance that's hard to miss. Together, they form a duo that's all about appearances and societal benchmarks of achievement. At our most recent family gathering, their true colors showed more vividly than ever. With relatives around, the living room buzzing with updates and accomplishments being shared, Brian took it as an opportunity to contrast our lives. Still tucked away in your room playing tech guru, huh, Alex? Brian's voice boomed across the chatter, a smirk playing on his lips. When are you going to get a real job like the rest of us? Jessica chimed in, her tone laced with a mock concern that didn't quite reach her eyes. Yeah, Alex, aren't you tired of the same old? Brian was just promoted again, and here you are still living with mom and dad. The room fell into an awkward silence, with some of our cousins glancing my way, pity mingling with curiosity. Trying to shrug off the discomfort, I countered, Well, not all of us measure success by office size or title. I'm actually doing pretty well, handling projects that impact real people. But their laughter cut short my defense, echoing a bit too loudly as Brian added, Come on, Alex, it's time to grow up, don't you think? Move out, wear a suit, make something of yourself? Their words stung more than I cared to admit. As the evening wore on, their taunts became the background noise of my every interaction, the laughter and casual dismissals painting a clear picture of how little they understood my world. Retreating to my room later that night, the remnants of their words lingered in the air like a bad aftertaste. It was then, amidst the glow of my screens and the quiet hum of my servers, that I decided enough was enough. Their wedding was fast approaching, and it would be the perfect stage to unveil the truth about my success, the tech company I'd been building in secret. They thought I was a loser stuck in his childhood room, but I was about to show them just how wrong they were. Just a few weeks before the wedding, as I sat at my makeshift office, a gilded envelope arrived. It was the official invitation, as ostentatious as everything else about the event. The gold lettering seemed to mock me, a reminder of how Jessica and Brian viewed my simpler, less flashy existence. Join us for the wedding of the century, it proclaimed. Century, indeed. The tension escalated during a family dinner when Jessica decided to bring up the topic once again. Alex, you're coming to the wedding, right? You wouldn't miss your little sister's big day. Her voice was light, but her eyes bore into me, challenging. Brian smirked from beside her, adding fuel to the fire. Yeah, Alex, it'll be nice to see you out of that home office for once. Who knows, it might inspire you to finally get a life. The words were like a jab, and I felt my resolve waver. Part of me wanted to refuse, to boycott their big day and save myself from further humiliation. But another part, perhaps the part still tied to familial bonds and old affections, felt compelled to attend, to not stir the pot any further. Alone later, I mulled over their words, the invitation lying accusingly on my desk. My career, my choices, my very lifestyle were on trial, and I felt an overwhelming urge to prove them wrong, not just to shut down their taunts, but to vindicate myself. I knew their world, one of appearances and shallow judgments, and I realized that their wedding would be the perfect stage to reveal my truth. The decision weighed heavily on me. Attending would mean stepping right into the lion's den, subjecting myself to their world where I had always been seen as less. Yet it also offered a chance, a moment to turn the tables and show them that success isn't always measured by public appearances or conventional paths. The day of Jessica and Brian's wedding arrived draped in the kind of opulence that only glossy magazines could do justice. The venue was breathtaking, nestled on an expansive estate with rolling hills in the background, ornate gardens dotting the periphery, 
and a grand mansion serving as the backdrop. Guests in designer attire mingled on manicured lawns, champagne flutes in hand, as a string quartet played harmoniously nearby. I arrived somewhat reluctantly, blending into the background as I navigated through clusters of guests, each conversation a reminder of the world Brian and Jessica reveled in, one of wealth, connections, and superficial accolades. My simple suit felt understated amidst the sea of tuxedos and shimmering gowns, but I kept my head high, my resolve firm. As the ceremony gave way to the reception, the air was thick with anticipation, and not just for the couple's happiness, but for the grandeur that was promised. Brian took the stage, microphone in hand, his smile wide as he looked over the crowd. Thank you all for being here on this monumental day, he began, his voice echoing through the opulent hall. His speech was a parade of his achievements and the lavish life he and Jessica planned. We've worked hard to build a life not just of love, but of success. Not everyone can claim to have climbed so high, to have achieved so much. His gaze flickered briefly to me, a smirk barely hidden. It's all about making real moves, not just sitting back and watching life pass you by from behind a computer screen. The laughter that followed, tinged with condescension, stung more than I expected. I stood there, a glass of champagne untouched in my hand, my heart pounding in my chest. They didn't know. None of them did. The success I had quietly built, my company that was thriving beyond expectations, hidden from the prying eyes until now. As Brian continued, recounting tales of corporate victories and exotic vacations, I felt a mix of emotions. Anger, certainly, at the public slight. But more so, there was a growing sense of anticipation, almost exhilaration. Today, their narrative of my life would crumble. Here's to a future of continued success, to reaching heights some can only dream of, Brian toasted, the crowd cheering in response. I clinked my glass with those around me, a smile spreading across my face. Yes, today would indeed be about reaching unimaginable heights, but not in the way Brian or anyone else expected. As the toasts began, a parade of heartfelt messages and humorous anecdotes filled the air, each speaker accentuating Jessica and Brian's perfect union. Glasses clinked, and laughter echoed through the grand dining hall, lavishly adorned with crystal chandeliers and silk drapes. I waited, a knot of nerves and anticipation tightening in my stomach. Then, the unexpected happened. The next speaker was a well-known tech industry influencer, Mark Thompson, a last-minute addition to the guest list, unknown to most but profoundly significant to me. He stepped up, his presence commanding attention with an easy charisma that only those truly comfortable in their achievements possess. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark began, his voice resonant, I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate this beautiful couple. But there's another reason I'm excited today. I'm here because of an incredible talent, a rising star in the tech world who happens to be among us tonight. The room stilled. Curiosity peaked. Mark's eyes found mine, and he smiled. I'm talking about Alex, who without much fanfare has built one of the most innovative tech startups this year. His company isn't just thriving, it's revolutionizing how we think about web and software solutions. And get this, his venture just crossed the $5 million revenue mark in under two years. Silence enveloped the room for a moment, a stark contrast to the earlier merriment. Faces turned towards me, expressions ranging from disbelief to awe. I could feel every gaze heavy with sudden respect and reconsideration of the person they thought they knew. Jessica and Brian looked stunned, their faces a canvas of shock and confusion. The image of Brian's earlier condescension, his smug assumptions about my life, flashed through my mind. Now here we were, with the tables turned dramatically. The murmurs began, a ripple of conversations breaking out as people reassessed the narrative they had been fed. Mark continued, unfazed by the disruption, detailing a few of my achievements, each point driving home the truth of my success which had remained hidden under the shadow of Jessica and Brian's judgment. As Mark concluded his toast, raising his glass to innovation, real success, and the quiet achievers among us, the applause that followed felt like a vindication. Jessica and Brian managed a feeble clap, their smiles tight, 
their eyes unable to meet mine. The rest of the evening shifted. Guests approached me, their earlier dismissals replaced with curiosity and praise. Conversations blossomed around me about technology, entrepreneurship, and the underestimated paths to success. As for Jessica and Brian, the glitter of their perfect day had dulled, overshadowed by the revelation of a reality they had chosen to ignore. Their fairy tale wedding had become the backdrop to my coming out party as a successful entrepreneur, a narrative twist that no one, least of all Brian, had seen coming. This moment, this night, marked a turning point not just in my professional life, but in how I was seen by my family and peers. The underdog had had his day, and it was sweeter than I had ever imagined. In the aftermath of the wedding, the shift in how people viewed Jessica and Brian was palpable. The revelation of my success not only altered perceptions of me, but also cast a glaring light on their behavior and attitudes. Their superficial judgments and smug superiority, once overlooked or tolerated by their social circle, became stark liabilities. Friends and acquaintances began to distance themselves, wary of aligning with what now appeared to be shallow, judgmental personalities. The financial implications were immediate. Brian's connections, once a source of opportunities, grew cooler, impacting his career prospects. As for Jessica, the embarrassment of being publicly upstaged at her own wedding by the brother she had disparaged took a personal toll. Her social standing, so meticulously crafted, began to crumble. The couple found themselves grappling with a social backlash they hadn't anticipated, their previously unblemished facade showing cracks as their circle tightened, leaving them to reconsider the value of appearances and the cost of their past arrogance. With my company's continued growth, I found new avenues to give back, particularly in mentoring young developers. Sharing my journey, emphasizing the non-linear paths to success, became a part of my mission. I spoke at conferences, participated in tech forums, and held workshops, not just as a leader in the field, but as a testament to the fact that success can come from anywhere, regardless of one's background or personal choices. Reflecting on my journey, I realized that this experience had not just changed how others saw me, it changed how I saw myself. No longer just Alex, the underachiever, but Alex, the innovator and mentor. My life gained layers that went beyond personal vindication. It became about inspiring others to pursue their dreams despite the naysayers. As I moved forward, I did so with a renewed sense of purpose and fulfillment. The validation I felt was not merely from the external acknowledgement of my achievements, but from the internal recognition of my own worth and capabilities. I left Jessica and Brian to navigate the consequences of their actions. For me, the future was about building on my success, about continuing to defy expectations and helping others do the same. Their wedding day, intended as a celebration of Jessica and Brian's union, instead became a pivotal moment of my personal and professional rebirth. As I advanced in my career and personal life, I carried with me not just the satisfaction of success, but the deeper gratification of having risen above and beyond the limitations others had tried to place on me. That wraps up our story. Now, I have a question for you all. Do you believe public revelations of success, like Alex's at the wedding, are a justified way to address personal grievances? Or do they risk escalating conflicts unnecessarily? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going about the impacts of public validation versus private satisfaction. And if you enjoyed the story and want to join in on more discussions like this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us bring more content like this to you.